What's up world? My name is Sarah and welcome back to another episode of whatever it is that we're doing here. Oh no! <laughs> oh, you know what? This might be a disaster too. Welcome to my kitchen. We are going to play literally spice up. Well, oh. <laughs> you haven't used or very rarely use a whole bunch of different spices. Position. This is the perfect time to kind of a whole bunch. I'll go through all the spices. We're going to make them in these jars. Did you get that kind of? Oh my God. <laughs> it's just the pieces. Before we start, I wanted to share that I finally bought a stone mortar. A little extra here and there. <laughs> it's not science. Oh. My goodness, oils and flavors that are in it. I think I'm gonna try Moroccan chickpea salad. But I am going to break the rules because it's my kitchen. Oh, oh my god. Today we are in the kitchen again, and I'm super excited because we are going to play and mix a whole bunch of spices together. Now, I was gifted this book a couple of weeks ago and it is a Moroccan, Egyptian kind of inspired flavors full of basic and non-basic recipes that you can spice up, literally spice up, with a bunch of different flavors and with different, I mean like spices maybe that you haven't used or very rarely use or even spices that you would use with something else but in this case we're using it with a different kind of dish. Anyhow, I'm excited because today the cooking is inspired by a whole bunch of different spices. We are celebrating Ramadan with some Middle Eastern flavors and I'm super excited. I'm happy that you are joining us for this in kitchen, how to spice up, literally spice up your life with some new flavors. And this is the perfect time to kind of educate yourself on new flavors and just recipes and dishes because soon, hopefully soon, when lockdown and other restrictions are over or at least loosened, you're gonna open your doors to your family and friends and have them over and like I said, this is a great time to kind of update your spice cabinet and try out things that you can then make for your friends and family, have them over and today we're making a bunch of great meals. We are starting out with two spices we're going to make ourselves. They are useful for any meat and poultry and vegetarian dishes. They have a whole bunch. I'll go through all the spices. We're gonna make them in these jars and I'm hopefully not gonna butcher the names. So like I said, two spices. One is more of a spice that you add to dishes and one is something that I love to have with fresh bread. Then we're gonna make three main dishes two desserts because we can and instead of me blabbering too much let's just get into it and start by making our first spice mix all right let's start by putting on my apron now comment below if you have tried any new dishes or flavors or meals during quarantine like you were experimental in the kitchen i'd love to hear what you did what was a miss and what turned out really good. I'd love to hear that. And if you've had noodles the whole quarantine, that's fine too, I'm not here to judge. And maybe this video will inspire you to try something new. Before we start, I wanted to share that I finally bought a stone mortar that I purchased last week at Ikea when we did the bedroom makeover and this one is so nice because it is a double-sided you can use the bottom or this bigger bowl 
and today we're going to use it for a lot of the stuff that we're putting into different recipes and spice mixes. Now I will list all of the ingredients that go into this spice mix and everything else. You'll see them on the screen while I put them in. So let's get started. I'm going to start with all the spices that do not need to be crushed in the mortar. I'll just start by adding all the powdered spices into the bowl and then we'll use the mortar for the ones that need to be crushed. Now the name of the spice that we're making is called Razel Hanout and I apologize for not pronouncing it correctly. I will also put that on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> If you watched any of my other cooking videos, you know that a little extra here and there. <laughs> it's not science, like baking. It's not science like baking, yes. A lot of my things aren't science, so. It's like, it looks like powdered cheddar. It does look like powdered cheddar. That'll be a different video. This stuff you have to be careful with because this will stain your clothes and Chili. Now that all the pre-powdered spices are combined, we are going to use the mortar for the spices that need to be grinded. Now the whole idea is to grind them fine enough so they will mix well with the powdered spices that are already in the mix. Oh no, I thought these were going to be whole. I'll just add this to the powdered spices. All right, let's get a crush in. Really smell all the flavors. If you don't have a mortar, you can also use a blender or some of these you can crush just in your hand. And if there is a flavor that you don't like, you don't have to put it in necessarily. All right, it looks perfect. It smells divine. We're gonna add this to the powdered mixture and we're good to go. All right, just by smelling all of these flavors together, makes me super excited for what I'm gonna use this for. And obviously there's leftovers and I will be using it. Oh, to make a whole bunch of chicken. chicken. Yes, perfect. Oh my goodness. I'm not lying. You're gonna eat it as is. It, it does smell like, it's like sweet and savory and I don't know, smell it. Yeah, definitely like chicken. I think the chickpeas are gonna be super nice. Yeah. With that. All right, today we are cooking vegetarian meals. You could use this for chicken, lamb, beef, anything. All right, let's put this in my cute little jar and make the dukkha. Oh, there you go, your own little mix of spices. Now for the dukkha that we are making, it has five ingredients. I know that this is a base that we're making. You can basically make dukkha out of any type of nuts and you can add your own spices. Today I wanna to do the one that's in the book, but we have bought a dukkha or several dukkhas from the store and this one, if I can get it open. <laughs> mm. This one looks like it has sesame seeds and let me check if I can see. This has almonds, pistachios, sesame seeds, and a bunch of spices. And it looks a little different than the one that we're making today. The one that we're making today is going to be a very simple base that you can recreate at home with the things that you already have in your cupboards. For this one, we are going to roast the hazelnuts and the sesame seeds just on a little pan for just a couple of minutes to kind of access some of the oils and flavors that are in it and give the dukkha a little roasted flavor which i think is going to add really nicely now i do know that they sell these hazelnuts i think it's hazelnut that are kind of 
sugar coated and these aren't the ones but I kind of am tempted to make a sweeter dukkha in the future. Let me know if you've done a sweeter dukkha and what you add to make it sweet. I'd love to hear your comments. Now I'm going to mix the hazelnuts and the sesame seeds and put them on the stove on medium heat for just a couple of minutes, like I said, to roast them. There's no oil or added anything. They're gonna go on as plain. Now that they have roasted on medium heat for a couple of minutes, I will add them to the bowl. And you can roast these in the oven if you want, or you can not roast them at all if you don't want to. Uh, now I want to put some cilantro and I think that's the only thing that we need the mortar for so all right this has blended beautifully we're going to add it to our nutty mix stir it up a little and then we are adding cumin and some black pepper that is our base for the dukkha for today. Oh, it smells good. I think roasting the sesame seeds and the hazelnuts adds to the smell at least. Let's taste the. Mmm, oh my goodness. Yeah, I like it. You could add a little bit of sugar, but like I said, I think I'm gonna try the sugar-coated nuts I saw in the baking area one time, but all in all, I really like this. Can't wait to have it with the bread. Now to the actual cooking. We are going to use the Razel Hanout mix that we made and make a Moroccan chickpea salad and adding the spice. Okay, for the salad, we are going to cut and roast the carrots in some olive oil and our spices. The recipe in the book says to cook them in the oven, but I am going to break the rules because it's my kitchen and I'm going to use it on the pan 10-20 minutes, lightly have them on medium to roast on the pan instead of the oven. Let's start by peeling our carrots. Now for the carrots, I'm gonna use this handy dandy vegetable cutter and uh, let's see what kind of mess we can get ourselves into. That's not it. All right, let's see. Oh my goodness. Should it be shorter? Let's cut this. Amateur in the kitchen, as long as you're having fun, eh? Doing something. Not doing it enough. Oh my goodness. It's like a big pencil sharpener. It is like a pencil sharpener. Now, what you need is thicker carrots. These little itty bitties are like, I don't know. Oh my goodness, now it's stuck in there. You know what? Screw this tool. I bet you it works with other vegetables better. I don't know. Carrots is just making a mess. Let's uh, find something better. All right, we usually don't bust this out until Thanksgiving but let's see what this guy can do. We might be gadget crazy in this kitchen, but you know. Oh no! <laughs> oh, you know what? This might be a disaster too. Welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> it can only go one way, but it's working. This would probably be easier with the knife. I think this is the problem. Yeah. All right, I'm just gonna use the knife for the rest of these. And although I do like the consistency of what the cutter was doing, it was also just pain in the ass. <laughs> the good news is the carrots will be eaten and added to the salad. That's the main part. All right, we are going to add these to the pan, put some of the olive oil and our homemade spice mix. All right, now that the carrots have simmered nicely on the pan with the oil and the spices, I'm going to add the chickpeas to them. And while they kind of marinate together, we're gonna to make the sauce oil dressing for this salad. Now, 
Next up, I am going to pull off some mint leaves that I'm going to add on top of the salad. Side note, I did put some salt and pepper on the chickpea carrot mixture that's on the stove to add a little flavor. We do have mint in our own little garden, but the leaves are so tiny that I don't wanna take them off yet. Oh, you know it, smells so good. Next up, we're gonna make a sweet potato pepper soup and a separate asparagus strawberry dish. Let's start by cutting the onions and sweet potatoes for our soup. I have now cut the onion and the sweet potato. This is a super simple recipe. We're gonna cook the onion in the pot with some oil, add the sweet potatoes, and then we're gonna add some stock. You can use vegetable stock or any stock that you have. And when they have cooked for about 15 minutes, we are gonna use one of those hand devices to smooth out our creaminess of soup. Then we're gonna add juice from one lemon. When the soup is finally ready, we're gonna add a little bit of, you can put sour cream or yogurt or creme fraiche in this case, and crushed peppers. I'll show you the peppers in just a second. Now that the soup is coming along, doing its thing in the back, I'm going to prepare our third and last dish before the desserts. And it is a spinach asparagus strawberry dish. <laughs> Let me show you what I put in it. So our three main ingredients are, like I said, spinach, asparagus, and strawberries. We are going to cook the asparagus on the pan for a few minutes and we are going to make a Dijon dressing. Now for the salad dressing, we are going to use half a vanilla bean, the seeds inside, a little bit of Dijon, this is a Dijon honey flavor, and some vinegar. Okay, let's add the asparagus, then our delicious Dijon dressing, and to top it off, we're going to dab some ricotta cheese on it. Okay, let's add some salt and the lemon juice of one lemon. It looks really creamy. It smells super delicious. All right, let's dish it. Add a little creme fraiche and our peppers. All right, my favorite time. Let's taste these. I wanna get some of the peppers and everything. You can taste the lemon, but not in a way that I thought I would taste the lemon. I love the texture. I like it. Mm, a plus, super delicious. Now for the asparagus delicious dish. I wanna grab everything I can on one fork. Mm, oh my God. Mm-hmm, oh that's nice. 
This at a summer barbecue will be the number one hit. It's almost like not really a dessert, but it is that fresh, a little sweet, I don't know. Again, A plus. And now for our chickpea carrot salad dish that we added the Razel Hanout spice that we made. Mm. I think the mint is gonna add that extra oomph that it needs. Mm. Oh, nice. Wow. Now, if you're someone that's thinking that maybe the spice is too spicy or hot, not really. Like you can obviously taste it, but very subtle, all the flavors, like I can taste almost everything individually, but they blend really nicely together. Really good, I like it. And now for our dukkha, I have a little bit of olive oil, some bread, what I like to do is I dip the bread into the olive oil and then I dip it into the dukkha and then I eat it. Mm. Mm. Because it's only the two of us, I'll double dip, but you know, you have to be careful these days. Mm -hmm. That was all so super delicious. I can't wait for our desserts. All right, like I said, we are doing two desserts today because why not? And the first dessert is a creme brulee with a twist. It's going to be a ginger creme brulee. And because I don't have a torch to do the sugar thing on top, I have something in mind that might work. Let's start by adding the vanilla bean and the peeled and chopped ginger to our cream. We're gonna put it on the stove to warm up and then set aside for about 30 minutes and then continue. Oh, scorched vanilla. It smells like vanilla. It doesn't look like much, but we're gonna warm it up and go from there. All right, now that that is gonna cool off for about half an hour, we are going to attack our second dessert of the day. That is a spicy tea with vanilla ice cream. All right, we're gonna start out by adding some water and spices to a pot, bring them to a boil. Then we're gonna add some black tea, milk and honey, and then strain it through and then add the ice cream. All right, I brought it to a boil. We're going to add milk, honey, and some strong black tea, and then put it back on the stove, bring it to a boil again, and then we can strain it and add the ice cream. While the spiced milk tea is coming along, we are going to go forward with the ginger creme brulee that we have and mix yolks with some sugar and then add our gingery cream. That looks about right. Now let's strain add the cream. Okay, let's oop, add them to our little cups and pop them into the oven. All right, our spiced milk tea is now come to a boil and I'm going to strain it into a separate bowl because that's easier. <laughs> I probably don't have to tell you, but this smells so good. All right, let's add the spiced tea to our glasses. We want maybe a quarter or so. Oh, I'm making a mess. And we're gonna add some ice cream to it. Now, can I make a perfect ball? <laughs> Not really. Close enough. Close enough. That's all right. Oh! All 
All right, let's taste these. Oh, that's nice. Mm. Mm -hmm. It kind of reminds me of when we were kids, we would have ice cream sodas. You put the ice cream and then you pour the pop on top. I kind of want to taste the milk tea by its own. So I'm just going to rinse this, pour it in here. All right, let's taste this. Mm. I like the flavor, but to be 100% honest, what I would do would skip all the water, maybe just a little bit of water. Like boil the spices right into the milk, maybe a little bit of water, but I think the sweetness of the milk would add to the, the flavor and the texture would be more of a thicker milky kind of, I don't know, what do you think? Yeah. So even though this was a hit with the ice cream and, and the flavors, I wanna try this without that water, like the starting water. I wanna do it in milk, cook the spices because the, the flavors are perfect. Yeah, but it won't go to waste. All right, the last step for the creme brulee that's still in the oven is to make the top sugar coating. And like I mentioned, I don't have a torch and I didn't really want to buy a torch just for this particular meal. Like if I'm going to use a torch afterwards, I don't mind, but I don't know any other dish dessert that you would use a torch. There's probably millions, but I don't know. Comment below if you do use a torch and have great ideas how I could use it. Cause otherwise, to be honest, I'm not sure how many times I'm going to make creme brulee. I don't know. Maybe when it comes out, it'll be like, we're making this every week. Then I'll go out and buy a torch. But because I don't have a torch, I'm going to make a little kitchen experiment. I'm going to melt some sugar with a little bit of syrup and water. Just slowly make a little sugary paste. And then when they come out, we'll put the sugary paste. They may or may not harden. I don't know, should we put it in the fridge? Let's be honest, I'm just winging it. This could be a total disaster or maybe I'm onto something, who knows? Let's try it anyway. This is probably way more than I need, but we'll see. Now, the reason why I'm adding water and syrup is I still want it to be liquidy because the sugar is just gonna melt and become hard. We'll see what the combination makes. We'll put it on the stove. They look relatively good. Now, let me just grab the icing, sugaring, and drizzle that on top. All right, let's... <laughs> I'm just gonna cover, use the whole thing. Because of the dark syrup, it kind of smells like maple treats. And believe it or not, it already crystallized. It's only, it's like, I don't know. You wanna taste it? Yeah. Let's taste it. All right, let's see. Oh my, this is like, <laughs> oh, it's gonna taste good. I'm pretty sure. Ooh, that looks nice. I can smell the ginger. Mm. Oh wow. Oh, that's nice. Hmm. Truth be told, I'm not really a creme brulee fan. Not that I don't like it, it's just that I very rarely have it. I can't even remember if I've ever had it. I probably have, but the sugar topping didn't turn out as I thought, but trust me, it'll be delicious. This is a very unique <laughs> creme brulee with my own twist on it. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen adventures today. I really loved playing around with spices and flavors and different dishes. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and remember to subscribe so you can find your way back for next week's video. Take care now. And it's gone. <laughs> oh my goodness, it smells so good. Did you get that coming? Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna